So now I'm having people duet my videos and trying to shame me and discredit me and say all these nasty things about me. That's a fun thing to wake up to in the morning. Hello YouTube and welcome to the Body Honesty Project. My name is Lydia and today I have something a little bit different for you. Because instead of just my voice debunking fat acceptance TikToks, you're gonna get two voices. Because this past weekend, I teamed up with another YouTuber that plays in the space, Miss Kayla Shea, and we met to discuss fat acceptance and to dissect and debunk an FA TikTok. Kayla and I share a lot of common points of view, and I know that our audience does definitely overlap. So I hope you enjoy this conversation between me and Kayla dissecting cute fat queer. Well, it's really nice to talk to you, like screen to screen. <laughs> I agree. It's really nice to finally like get to like meet you outside of just like watching your content. Yeah. Yeah. We have, um, I think we have quite the overlap. So this might be qu kind of fun for our viewers to see us dissect. Yeah. Something. I Plus, think we have really similar takes. Yes. Yes. I, I agree. You're like, you're like me, but like half my age, <laughs> <laughs> like my own daughter. Yeah. <laughs> well, I also feel like uh, it, it's interesting to see two women of color talking about fat acceptance and how they tend to pull us into the mix and like. Yeah, it's, it's very that. often that I see, at least in my experience in like this activism group, it always appeared as though we were being spoken to as if we all thought the same or that we were all a monolith. And when anybody kind of strayed from that, we were seen as like somebody that had internal work to do, internal phobia, internal racism, whatever, when we stray from the, the narrative that is being kind of put on us involuntarily by a, a large majority of just like fed activists that are usually white. Right. Yeah. White women claiming racism. Yeah, that's rich. Yeah. Okay, so as um, we are considered to be the bullies, according to fat acceptance, but yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Kayla? I wouldn't consider myself a bully, but I know that's very maybe vain of me, but I, I definitely wouldn't consider myself a bully whatsoever. I think the term bully or violence or all these things are kind of thrown around when people just simply disagree and I wish kind of in this movement or just in the world in general we're allowed to acknowledge different opinions without jumping to the you're a bully for disagreeing with me train whatsoever yes I completely agree the whole the bullying thing is in substitute for you don't agree with me therefore you're a bully and then they tack on, but I'm a marginalized person. So how do you feel about that? Like, so we're not allowed to say anything about what you're yeah. saying because you're marginalized? Yeah, I mean, as a marginalized person myself, I am guilty of using that before that term. But I think me jumping to, at least in my opinion, getting very defensive about my identity, even though I have every right to be, it blocked me from learning a lot from other people because I look at somebody disagreeing with something about me and if they're not being hateful and they're not being bigoted towards me, they just have a simple disagreement about something, then I shut down or I used to at least shut down and be like, oh, you're just fat phobic. There's nothing to see here. Exit. But in being able to open my mind to different opinions, even ones I don't necessarily agree with, I've been able to learn a lot and I wish more people especially in this movement were open to different opinions without becoming so defensive of their own identity that they're unable to just learn something possibly from another human being even if you don't learn anything it is important to just possibly even give it a chance and open your mind to a different possibility or a different viewpoint that somebody has yes yeah, so i agree that's that's very mature for you for such a young person <laughs> I won't, I won't comment on that too much. Sorry. Okay. That's let's okay. Talk. I'm almost 30. So I was like, I've grown a lot, but I've always just kind of been on that end of, I guess, maturity. Yeah. As people have told me before. 
Okay, so Sorry. I'm going to share the video and I'll play a little bit and then we'll both comment on, on it. Okay. Okay. People duet my videos and trying to shame me and discredit me and say all these nasty things about me. That's a fun thing to wake up to in the morning. I'm putting myself out here on the internet because I actually have good things to say. I have smart things to say. I have truthful things to say. But it's not my responsibility to spoon feed it to you. It's not my responsibility to prove anything to you. If you are having questions about what I'm saying, go read something around health at every size. That's a good place to start. But I'm not here to help you. Okay. Let's stop that there. Do you want to start? Uh, yeah. I briefly talked about this uh, video in My Biggest Bullies Effects. That's in part one series. I've, I seem like I'm, I'm going to be doing forever at this point. But <laughs> <laughs> I I have a lot of issues with the, the approach that Cute Fat Queer takes in this content because they state that they're here to reach somebody, but they're at the same time not going to educate the audience that she's claim that they claim they are reaching. And I find that kind of counterproductive because if you were trying to reach somebody, then wouldn't you want to spread the knowledge to the audience that you say that you're trying to reach? And also if you are claiming to have this sort of answer regarding health at every size or this new answer regarding science, obesity, et cetera, wouldn't you want to share it rather than have people do their own research? Because if you tell people, and this is something that's really common in the facts of this community, if you tell people to go out and do their own research, nine times out of 10, they're going to find research that completely contradicts what you're saying. Because I've been told so much to just Google it. I Google it and they're wrong. So I don't like I Googled it and you're incorrect about it. And I pulled up the the Hayes website and it is like a, a considered a holistic approach to the obesity epidemic. They don't want to call it that, but the obesity epidemic and so on. And there's nothing that's proven, nothing is factual. These are all just opinions, theories, et cetera. And so to speak on it like it is proven fact when it's just an opinion or a theory that suits you and your feelings, emotions, narratives, et cetera. I don't know. It seems a little bit out of touch, not only from reality, but just like out of touch in general. What are your, what are your thoughts on it? Well, the first thing I would like to comment on is the whole burden of proof. Like when you say something, you have the burden of like, it's your burden to prove it. You can't just, the sky is red. Oh, figure it out yourself. Like, you have to prove that you can't just say things. It's yeah. if you're the one who's giving the information, they don't understand that it's their burden. The onus is on them to provide the facts. It's not the and the people that are challenging them. It's if you're asking a question, in my opinion, it's not up to you to provide the facts. In our case, yeah. like, because both of us debunk them, it is up to us. We show the facts. We show the documents. We show the science. It's up to us to back up what we're saying. They never back up what they say. It's like, go find out yourself. Like, well, if you're saying something and you're trying to reach something with your bullshit, um, maybe you should try to prove it. Exactly. The, I, I feel like leaving that up to the audience, you're going to only invite more people to disagree with you because they look it up themselves and they find what I found about it that it's literally just kind of like a theory that there's a lot more evidence to prove against what they're stating then where are we left? I just don't, mm -hmm. just, no, I just don't agree with you because you weren't able to tell me what I should look up, tell me what I should research. You allow me to research it for myself. And that's fine if you want to research something yourself, but just know that there is so much evidence working against you. I don't think this is a good way to recruit people into your movement. If you are relying on them to do the heavy lifting, the burden work of looking it up themselves in order to validate you, even though at the end is most likely not going to. Yeah. 
And furthermore, like the Hayes science, if you look into the actual studies, they'll say like there's um, a Lindo Bacon video where um, they say it's been proven that people that are overweight or even mildly obese can still be healthy. Fine. Uh, let's say that is completely true. Look up what overweight and mildly obese looks like. This is like BMI 3031. <laughs> like me. <laughs> like me overweight. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's not cute, fat, queer size. Like it, it's a, a, we use the words overweight and obese, but really this is our average person is what they're qualifying as still healthy which I agree with. Yeah, sure. But people are taking the science of that and applying it to like 600 pounds. Like the, the yeah. study didn't say that. The study said overweight, mildly obese, like 31, 30, 29, that kind of EMI. Yeah. And there's different levels of obesity based on a lot of factors, including comorbidities. The higher that you are, the more issues that may arise or the higher risk that you have for these issues. So being overweight, like myself, I'm overweight, but not obese. And being obese are two very different things. And then even the categories within obesity yeah. are each very, very different experiences. And that they even say that in their own little fatness spectrum thing. They talk about mostly about clothing access and clothing sizes, but they fail to also talk about the health implications that go along with that spectrum as it continues and continues to go up. Yeah. What I find very interesting is the actual people that the health at every size science that was based off of. So people like you and a little bit bigger are the ones that the fat acceptance people yell at for speaking over. Like they're like, shut up. You're not fat enough to be in this space. And they're all about haze. And like, those are the people that the science is based off of, not you. Like all your haze research was based off of those people and you're taking their health status applying it to yourself and then telling them to shut up. Yeah, exactly. They're reconstructing the information to suit themselves. And then they will call people like me skinny, which I guess compared to them, sure. Mm -hmm. But in the grand scheme of things, no, I'm not. But mm -hmm. they'll use the term like all oh, the thins, the skinnies, to, in order to kind of shut down people that are, considered small fats or mid-size. I don't even like the term mid. They don't like the term mid-size. I kind of like it, mm -hmm. but they will use those terms in order to shut down the people that this study, like you said, was based around mm -hmm. that the science was created for. Right. It's really interesting and kind of like very dismissive yeah. of other people. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. I'm only here to reach somebody to reach somebody that needs to hear that fat is not a disease, that whatever you've been taught is a complete lie. And the reason why there's this lie is to make money off of you. Okay, let's stop it there. I wasn't planning on stopping it there, but I kind of wanted to now. <laughs> no, I have some stuff to say. I mean, but you can go first. This is, this is. Uh, um, Starting off with saying, I'm not going to prove anything to you. And then saying like, matter of fact, it's a lie. I'm here to tell you it's a lie with no proof. Like nothing. How, how is that helping anyone? If she actually had proof of something like this is just, I'm here to tell you what you want to hear. So you don't feel bad anymore. That's, that's how I take yeah. that. Yeah. I take that. You know, that's what they're kind of saying as well, because like like you said earlier, the burden of proof falls on them and they say, I don't have to prove anything to you, which you do if you're making these sorts of claims. I even have to prove myself with the well-known evidence that obesity is bad for you, but I still have to go in and cite my sources yeah. because that's what you're supposed to do when you're making a point. And they will speak in such black and white terms. And I've had conversations about this with my subscribers that many things in fact acceptance are so black and white and just like oh they're lying to you who's lying to us who's making money off of us you're not going to go into that and I know that their theories are like the diet industry and so on but we live in a society where everyone's profiting off of everybody that's just kind of how society works 
And so you can say that about almost anything, any insecurity, any food, anything. Yeah. Someone is making money, you know, off of you as a person. And so I, I kind of understand where they're coming from with that statement that, oh, they're lying to you. But that's not really like a profound realization. There's like money to be made in the society regardless. But I wish that they went in and cited something. They proved mm-hmm. something. Because even on the Hayes website that they said, go look, read something about Hayes, there is nothing about somebody lying to us. There's nothing about something making money off of us. It just talks about bodily autonomy and healthcare. It doesn't talk about mm-hmm. who specifically is lying to us. There's, that just sounds like a conspiracy theory yeah. at this point. Yeah. And when they talk about money, it's like, okay, as you mentioned, there's money to be made in all industries, but so they want to shun diet culture, but line the pockets of fast food and big pharma because, you know, fast food's making you sick and they're all sick and on tons of meds. So like, those are also evil corporations. So you're like, Ooh, diet culture bad, but all these other ones, yeah, take my money, take my money. (laughs) Exactly. Like diet culture, in the, in the sense thrives off of people being insecure with their bodies and going on diets in order to improve that. And then, and the guise of health and, and things like that. And then the fast food industry and other industries thrive on the fact that you need to eat every day. So they're going to make their food the most palatable for you. Both are quite insidious to be quite honest, but the only thing is like, you don't have to eat fast food to survive. That's one. And two, you don't have to contribute to the diet industry, diet culture in order to be healthy and lose weight. I it's, have not contributed a dime to diet culture. I yeah. just do things that are best for me. And I think it's really, I think it's very narrow minded to, to say that everybody that loses weight contributes to diet culture Agreed. when that's Agreed. not true whatsoever. People were losing weight before the insidious diet culture even began making its rounds. Mm-hmm. People have been able to regulate their bodies without the need for diet culture whatsoever. Yeah. Most of the times that I've lost weight, I've done it without anything, just myself. Like I didn't pay Weight Watchers. I didn't pay for Slim Fast or Jenny Craig or anything. I just looked, cut back what I was eating, stopped eating chips every night as a snack and add a little more exercise. That's all. Yeah. Going outside and especially on a nice day going outside and just working out and stuff, you know, yeah. you don't have to contribute to anything doing that. You yep. just have to you know, get up. Exactly. Okay. Let's do the next section. I know this to be true through my own personal experience and also through my education. So if you want to go and poo poo my master's degree, go right ahead, but at least I have one and I work damn fucking hard for that thing. And that also gives me credibility you want to see my degree? I'll show it to you if you really want to. Okay, I'll stop it there just because of the music. <laughs> yeah. It's just so funny when it's like randomly just like, <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. They do it in all their videos. Like the halfway through and then the the music. In fact, I think that some of my um, viewers said, it sounds that um, there's a, a tab playing music that, that uh, they weren't aware of. <laughs> Like in the background, yeah, it came out of nowhere. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so when when um when cute fat queer talks about personal experience and education, if you mm-hmm. look at their TikTok page, they comment all the time about their illnesses and their ailments, and that they're disabled and that they can't go out of the house. So. How is their experience relevant to fatness doesn't make you sick? That's That's like, depending I on know. the illnesses, depend, definitely dependent on, you know, the illnesses that you fat. I don't know anything about their illnesses personally, but I do know that there's a lot of fat activists out there that, you know, will claim to be healthy, but are going to multiple doctor's appointments a year to like get any sort of medication, whether it's for um, issues regarding their joints, regarding their hips, regarding their, their sleep apnea, things like that. And those things are oftentimes attributed to your size. I know that, you know, not everybody's invincible to arthritis, but it definitely can be contributed to your size. And I think uh, cute, fat, queer, 
trying to like peddle this master's degree. By the way, I asked them like three times where they got their degree from and they still haven't responded to me. So mm -hmm. well, I mean, the if degree... they wanted to show it to me, they would, but they don't, so they won't. Well, their degree is in social justice. At least that's what's posted or in, and counseling. So I don't see how having a degree in social justice and counseling gives you any right to talk about health and obesity. Like they're not no. related. They're not related at no. all. Especially like if you are trying to conjure up these these conspiracy theories based in nothing. And then you have no degree. Like I don't have a degree in health sciences or anything like that, but I also am well aware of the dangers of obesity. And mm -hmm. also saying that like your experience, although could be relevant to some degree, it's also completely anecdotal. Like we, like your experiences are not the same as other people's experiences. Mm -hmm. My experience being overweight was pretty, or obese, like I'm still overweight, but obese was not great. And it caused me to have health issues. And so that's my experience. And I can use that as a tool to tell other people my experience. But I can't say that this is 100% what's going to happen to you right. because of this, you know, it's just my experience. Do I see the evidence that being ob ob obese can cause prediabetes? Yeah. Cause I have personal experience from it, mm -hmm. but I think with cute fat queer stating that everyone's lying to you and that they're trying to make money off of you and then will not prove anything. And then says, I have a degree, even though they won't show their degree whatsoever or where they even got it from or anything like that, because not accusing you that queer of anything whatsoever, but people can fake degrees really easily nowadays. So there's no evidence, at least to me, that cute fat queer is fully versed on this topic mm -hmm. that they will say with such certainty that they know everything about. Right. Um, I have a family member that passed away due to obesity, but was not obese when they passed. And that mm -hmm goes down in the statistics, like obesity didn't cause it, but the obesity caused certain organs to shut down. And then yeah. the person lost weight, passed away at a normal weight, but they wouldn't have passed if they weren't obese in the first place. But so like statistics like this get mucked up all the time that obesity did cause yeah. it, but that's not what gets recorded. Yeah, they they will look at something like that situation, which I'm really sorry that happened. That's really upsetting and tragic. Um, they will look at something like that and be like, oh, it's because they lost weight that he died. And I've seen it so many times where people are just like, well, how, obese people are healthier than skinny people. If you lose weight, you're gonna you're gonna pass away or whatever like that. And I understand like that concern when it comes to like bariatric surgeries because mm -hmm. there are health risks associated with that. But simply cutting down what you eat and moving more. And if you have a thyroid condition or PCOS, going to get the care that you need in order to treat those issues, because yes, thyroid issues and PCOS can cause weight gain, but that doesn't mean that weight gain is still good. Like, right. It still could be an issue. And so taking care of yourself includes getting treatment for things that have may, may have caused weight gain. Right. And yeah, like losing weight is fantastic. But like, if you're really, really obese for a really long time, a majority of your life, your body, you only have one body, it can't, you can't regenerate a liver. So you kind of have to live with the consequences of being obese for a prolonged period of time, even though losing weight is going to benefit you overall in the long run. It's still you still live in an obese body for a long time, and your body has worked much harder than the average body in order to sustain it. And that's, that's going to show with age mm -hmm. much sooner than the average size person. Yes, I agree. Okay, let's continue on. I'm two years away from a doctorate. Two years that I could do if I really wanted to. But I don't because grad school is torture. And it's also a bunch of bullshit. So you want to come at me? Come at Okay. I'm going to rewind that after, but I just wanted to comment on the um, hypocrisy there. Like, I have a degree. I can show it to you. I'm educated. Grad school's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> what? Exactly. There's just It just seems like, like I said, I asked them multiple times, like, hey, where did you get your degree from? Not even like malicious, because I'm genuinely curious, because I personally have never heard of a school that offers degrees in social justice. But 
I didn't get an answer. They didn't send my comments. So maybe they do have a degree and all power to them. And probably grad school is BS. But if you're going to like peddle this advanced degree and then shit on other advanced degrees, then that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I'm not shitting on anybody with a master's degree. I have an associate's. I was broke as a joke in college, so I couldn't afford to go on. But I respect people's degrees, but I still have every right to disagree with them. And I think a lot of people use their degrees and just in general Mm -hmm. um, to kind of, in a a sense, yes, they may know more about a particular subject than another person that doesn't have that degree. Mm -hmm. But this is in regards to obesity, like obesity medicine, medicine in general. And neither me or Cute Back Queer have a degree in this subject. But they have their master's, so automatically they're more educated on it than I am, even though that master's degree is in something that's completely irrelevant to whatever QPAC queer happens to be talking about that day. Yeah. We're on the same playing field here as far as medical goes. You yeah. might have more experience in something like counseling, mm-hmm. sure. But if I, I know, if, if I saw my therapist making videos like this, I'd be like, no. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm going back. No, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay, let's continue on. I'm going to rewind this like, two seconds, I think. Me, come at me to my face. Come talk to me instead of just duetting or stealing my videos and then putting them on Twitter. Come talk to my face because I know you won't because you're a coward. Okay, I think that cute fat queer needs to know, needs to learn how the internet works. Yeah, that's the internet. Because this is coming face to face. Kayla, we are talking face to face right now. But if I were to do at you, that would also be considered face to face in my book, because you see my face, I see your face, and then you can respond. Yeah, it's always open to responses. I think cute fat queer doesn't really understand how the internet works and do wedding at least in my experience on tiktok um do wedding is kind of the same as just like responding to somebody mm-hmm. and so you have the right to respond to them back mm-hmm. to say like oh just come say it to my face i mean i, I probably wouldn't because i don't mm-hmm. want to go to your house but that's just a little bit weird to me because that's how the internet works if somebody you know, want to make a video about myself or about me or my content, sure, go ahead for it. Um, But I don't know. I just, to me, it doesn't really seem like there's a lot of understanding about how the internet works in this Mm -hmm. case whatsoever. And also, like, it's not really cowardly to just disprove or break down what you're saying and try to, like, pick it apart. Because I'm somebody that's viewing this video. I'm your audience. I mean, I'm not your audience, but I'm an audience member to this video that happened to be shown. And I'm in the mindset of like my own experiences, my own issues with that acceptance and reading this, I'm just kind of responding how most people would respond to this. Like mm-hmm. this, this whole correlation doesn't make any sense. This video is really jagged it doesn't have a lot of weight to it there's not a lot of nuance there's not a lot of understanding so me saying that yeah this video doesn't make any sense isn't really anything against you it's just the fact that this content doesn't make a lot of sense I really don't think it's cowardly that like you and I we put our faces out there too right like you said this this is who I am and I this is what I'm saying you you can rebut me back you can clip me and put me in your your TikTok that's fair game this is how it works. This is how the communication works. Yeah. So I think uh, cute fat queer is just butt hurt. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's finish it up. I think it's the last clip. And you want to use your social media to say crappy things about someone who is in a marginalized body. Wow, you're special. You really need another hobby. Okay. Who needs another hobby? (laughs) Us or them? I don't know. Is it the one that makes TikToks all day? No. They don't need a new hobby. Um, That is interesting to me because arguably me and Cute Fat Queer are doing the same thing. I just have, no offense, a little more substance to my content. It's because it's long form. It's not 
right. 15 second clips. Yeah. And we're doing the same thing. We're talking on a camera. We're talking about our opinions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. About many different topics, not just whatever, you know, but that's just interesting how we need the new hobbies because we disagree with a marginalized person coming from a marginalized person, I guess. Yeah. Fair game, I guess. Um, I, I don't like the shield of marginalization being used with fat acceptance people, like really at all. And a lot of people who are people of color, myself included, have talked about how we don't like being roped into this. And those comments are often ignored. And it's really frustrating. And I understand that there are also people of color that completely agree with fat acceptance and that's fine. But the amount of like, att- like the amount of ignoring, I guess is the best word for it, that is done to people like me or like you or like other people of color just because we don't agree. And that's that's one thing that has always bothered me about the fact that in this movement, like I talked about earlier, mm-hmm. that me, a, a woman of color, a mixed person, will say something that disagrees with that acceptance. And then all these fat white women will tell me, well, you have internalized this, you have internalized that. It's like, no, I just don't think this opinion like stands. Right. Like if you have to step on the backs of people of color, especially black women, in order to make your movement make sense to you, then it doesn't then it doesn't have a leg to stand on because the moment the that any like any of those people of color decide, yeah, this movement doesn't make any sense for us, we're gonna back out of it. Where does your movement stand? Because you have built this entire movement on the backs of queer people, um, people of color, et cetera. But what if the we don't all agree on that. What if I don't want to be roped into fatness because I can lose weight and I can't change my race. I can't change the fact that I wake up and I'm brown every single morning. Yep. I can't change the fact that that happens to me, mm-hmm. but I can wake up and decide, at least in the fatness sense, I can wake up and decide tomorrow, I don't want to be marginalized anymore and I'm going to leave. I'm going to lose weight. Mm-hmm. I can never yep. do that with my race yep like I just I just can't I can pass by straightening my hair and not going in the sun I can pass sure but that doesn't take away from the fact that I'm still somebody that is considered a person of color and was really highly ridiculed for most of my life from my small little white town and in regards to fatness Yes, I felt different for being fatter than people, but that like that can be changed based on my actions and my accountability and so on. If, if I feel like if you can weave in and out of marginalization, maybe your marginalization status isn't as solid as you claim it is. Right. Because right. there are people that are marginalized that are just disabled, queer, brown, black, mm-hmm. whatever, who can't wake up tomorrow and decide I'm not going to be disabled anymore. They they seem to say that just because they're marginalized, they can't be questioned. Like it's a, no, you can't question me because I am like, but that doesn't give you license just to invent facts. Yeah, I find it yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I, I often used to use, like I said previously, the shield of marginalization to prevent me from learning new things about other right. people just because I thought that they were fat phobic right. or just stating something factual. Right. You know, like I'm not going to learn about this. They're fat phobic. I'm just going to brush them off to the side. And in doing that, I prevented myself from learning so much. Right. Well, it's good that you and got I out of that. I feel like as long as you're not being hateful, as long as you're not being like cruel and hateful and disgusting towards people, I feel like we should be open to different opinions for sure. I agree. So another big shout out to Kayla Shea. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me. It was a lot of fun and I hope we can do one again in the future. And to everyone else, did you like this sort of format? Are there any other YouTubers that you'd like me to reach out to to maybe do a collaboration like this again? Let me know. So until next time, stay body positive, but also body honest. (laughs) 